Again, all these resources is here for you. So let me start with the multiple choice timed assessment. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, set up my usual thing for cheating. Yeah, chat.com, a four letter <laughs> domain. It's got it. Uh, so, um, um, so yeah, so again, what I'm about to do is cheating because uh, in addition to the honor code, which says that you are supposed to turn in uh, work that represents your work, that's kind of a catch-all catch that catches captures everything that might be academically dishonest. This particular assessment has a rule that says no outside help. So, you know, you with the homework, you might have been doing what I what what I've been demonstrating this semester, how to use ChatGPT as a kind of virtual tutor. And that I will say can be academically honest as long as you are using ChatGPT to learn and what you're submitting is your own work, not you know, ChatGPT's work. There's some fine dividing line there. When it comes to timed assessment, those nuances don't exist. If you are getting outside the help that is academic, th that is academic dishonesty and honor code violation for this class. So please don't do what I'm about to do. What I'm doing is I'm just, uh, you know, just making sure that I'm aware of the technological capabilities out there. And um, I also have a bit of a Pissing contest, <laughs> excuse my language, uh, with the ChatGPT. Uh, I, I think uh, in this class I've been beaten once, um, and um, so last week I think uh, in my other class ChatGPT got hundred percent accuracy, with about four minutes spent on the uh, assessment. So if it's gonna be similar here, then it's possible that the best I can hope for is a tie. But I want to just. Uh, Still compete, uh, you know, I mean, really the world's best chess player today is not any human being, it is stockfish. But um, people still play chess because there's some aspect of it that's enjoyable. It's not about just, uh, you know, being the fastest and best. There's um, life lessons maybe, <laughs> I don't know. So let me, I, I've gotten good at cheating and I've learned how to prime the chat GPT so that um, it helps me cheat as best as it does. And it, this is a kind of help that a good tutor would never give you and should never give you. But chat GPT does because it's not really a good tutor unless you make it. It's an amoral tutor. It'll tell you, it'll do, do whatever you ask it to. It won't, you know, recognize that you are using it to cheat and try to stop you, which Again, you are the human being with a sense of morality. You have to do what's right. So uh, let me give it this prompt. Hi, I'm working through um, multiple choice time the assessment for rotation. And I have a series of 10 questions. Uh, when I post to the question, would you please give me the best answer right away, followed by a short explanation of the correct answer. It should acknowledge. And I'll start. All right. And I'm going to stagger this uh, so that I sh use as little time as possible. Um, I know um, yeah, so torque is necessary to cause angular. Ex oh. You know, in the other attempt, it was telling me A, B, C, D stuff. But in this attempt, I don't think it's going to, which will, you know, cause me a little bit more time. But I, I think uh, I can still cheat my way through in less than five minutes. A little bit harder to copy. I remember in the past when I couldn't copy and paste in snapshot uh, screenshots, I was running out of time on these not before. Because, um, uh, you know, with those images, with the mathematical expressions, copying and pasting can take a lot of time. Again, um, so, right. I'm using the time, it's answering my question to. The ball has greater range because uh, with the 
still ramp. Yeah, that's probably right. I'm, I'm not really thinking about the questions. My physics brain is turned off. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I, I recognize correct answers because <laughs> I've written these questions. <laughs> um, the concept of total angular momentum space faster than. Oh, wait, angular momentum faster than. Six. Um, twenty-two point five. Is that G hat? It looks like a G hat. Yeah. If it's X hat, then oh well. Uh, font issue. Yeah. Sorry. I again, my physics brain is turned off, so I wasn't thinking about those directions and cross products. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um. Ooh, can I? Maybe barely. Are moved away, they tend to. If uh, stable, tend to. Tend to. Unstable, yeah, that's probably right. Okay, almost there. I like this setup. Uh, I think there's also a, a free-form question that's a kind of this setup also. Oh, I've done the demo before. Um, you will see it in the pre uh, demos recorded in previous semesters. Friction decreases. What? The friction force. Oh, oh I think that's wrong. Um, I think. I'm pretty sure. So, okay, so, so I have a chance of beating ChatGPT on accuracy if uh, it at least at ninety percent or below, as I'm suspecting it might be. Moving faster than it has enough kinetic energy to orbit. It gets that right. Uh, I mean, uh, right in the sense of the the text matching. <laughs> I'm not, it might also be right, uh, you know, physics answer wise, but I'm not thinking about that. So, all right. ten times the. All right. Uh, unless I copied something wrong, um, that should be everything. Yeah, four minutes. So I, so I think I've said this before. Uh, I'm not gonna try to beat it on time because um, that's a false errand. If I try to finish this in less than four minutes. I'm pretty sure I'm going to make mistakes. So my best chance of keeping up with the ChatGPT is not to try to beat it on time, you know, 4.1 minutes. I'm not going to be able to beat that on time. But what I can hope to do is beat it on accuracy. Because the ChatGPT missed the one. Oh, so let's uh, so, just so people don't have the wrong answers. Um, let's just uh, make sure that we know what it missed. I'm pretty sure it's that one question that I noticed. And then uh, we'll go from there. So question one, yeah, this is correct. Like rotational version of Newton's second law. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Newton's law of motion, especially the second law. So question two, this one. Um, so here you will actually have to kind of work out uh, some of the dynamics. You can't just guess at the answer. Um, the, um, I think, let's see. Although, um, this has been correct, you could just uh, guess it from the setup because the center of mass of the rod is here. So you can see that it has less uh, energy to start. So, yeah. Yeah, and the other choice is being wrong. That probably needs more, yeah, like uh, this needs more detailed analysis. So this is more of a like test taking strategy skill question. Because once you recognize this to be correct, then even if you don't have the detailed analysis that justifies this being wrong, you go with, well, I know this must be correct <laughs> in terms of time. So, all right, question three, uh, still ball has greater range. Yeah, because it slides. Yeah, so if we, um, rolls then there's going to be a rotational kinetic energy that energy has to go into so so yeah because it slides with the negligible friction so most of its energy goes into translational kinetic energy uh, question four 
in order to conserve total angular momentum. Oh, so it's describing, I think, some sort of collision. No, it's a movement. I see. I see. So the rotational inertia is decreasing, and this is the kind of thing where it's hard to find the translational analog. But with the rotation, ang, ang, with the rotational inertia decreasing, angular mo the and it's just set up in a way where there's no external torque, so angular momentum is conserved, and that does mean the the the, the rotational speed is faster. So yeah, so that's correct. And does it explain why the energy? Oh, it's not explaining the energy part. So actually, if you work out the energy, um, the as the disk spins faster, rotational kinetic energy actually increases. So you might ask, where is it coming from? It comes from the work done in having uh, uh, being able to move the mass to closer to the center, because you have to be applying a force that's at least equal to the centripetal force or whether the force you are pushing is the centripetal force, and that should be you know equal to mv squared over r. So you're applying some force over some distance, so you are doing positive work that actually increases the rotational kinetic energy. So, OK, question five. Um, is, so here, I guess uh, for this question, you can do the, um, the, the component definition of the cross product. Um, and um, yeah, so cross product, yeah. Yeah, so it's giving me brief explanation, so I think it's not... Um, so let me actually use this one as a kind of uh, example of how you might use ChatGPT in a way that's academically honest, um, which, by which I mean using it as a, as a tutor after you have finished the attempt. Because during the attempt, again, you shouldn't no outside help. But after you finish the attempt, let's say you are trying to study, figure out um, what you got wrong, and for the ones you might have gotten accidentally correct, you know, how can I learn it better so that I know it to be correct? <laughs> so uh, let me use this as an example of how you can have a dialogue with the ChatGPT in a way that helps you learn. Maybe you don't know how to do the cross product by component, so I'll ask it that. Okay, question six. So Conserved situation described below. We not conserved. Yeah, in precession, the precession happens precisely because the torque due to gravitational force on the bicycle wheel is causing the ang its angular momentum to change. So um, during the precession, yeah, torque due to gravity. That's so torque isn't changing. I mean, the, there is external torque, so angular momentum is changing. Okay, equilibrium, yeah, stable equilibrium, that does look like the definition of stable equilibrium. Yeah, that's basically, it's a definition check. Um, yeah. Question eight, yeah, so this is the question that I was saying it missed. Let's see. Um, steady, will slip out under her, yeah. So, physics of the situation. And so Carpenter climbs the ladder higher, increasing the torque due to gravity, yeah. Higher friction force at the base, yeah. Yeah, so th this explanation is actually totally correct. Um, yeah, I I don't know why I chose this wrong answer. Um, so, so I guess we could also use question A as an example. Let's do that first. So I'll do this. Um, so I'll say, going back to question eight, um, going back to, and by the way, so this would be another example of using ChatGPT in an academically honest way, where you are, so imagine, you know, th this attempt comes from you and you are trying to figure out what you missed and you suspect based on your score and whatnot and checking other questions that you might have missed this one. So then you you can ask ChatGPT, hey, I missed this. What do you think is the correct answer? And have a conversation from there. So going back to question eight, you said uh, what I attach as image here. Um, uh, but your explanation and the answer doesn't match up. Is it possible you uh, picked the incorrect choice as the answer. And let's see if we get to it right uh, going from that. Um, 
Yeah, so it's uh, this one. This is the correct choice. Uh, uh, um, so let, let's ask, because uh, the explanation it gave, it actually, you know, carpenter collapse letter, in center shifts higher, increase in torque, it requires a higher friction for set of base. Oh, you know, it's possible that it, it can't figure out that there's a normal force from the wall. Um, so, so l let's imagine this. Let's have a go through explanation of why each choice is wrong. Um, uh, so let's go through one choice at a time. Can you tell me why this choice is wrong? Um, now, you know, this obviously you can't and shouldn't do during the uh, timed assessment itself. Again, if you do it, it's academic dishonesty <laughs> and you can't do it because there isn't enough time. Um, so, incorrect because it misrepresents the primary reason. Yeah, adding additional mass. Yeah, relatively light. Uh, yeah, so it's still focusing on that. You might not know the about the normal force from the wall. Step whether the have increased. Yeah, can count steady friction can counteract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, what about this uh, choice? Uh, why is it wrong? And let's see if we can explain. <laughs> Inaccurately describes, uh, implies that the walls push on the ladder somehow. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I don't think it's ever going to get this right. Um, so let's see. Uh, so you gave me this uh, answer as the correct choice and based on everything else I've seen, I'm pretty sure the system is grading this as incorrect. Can you explain why this might be incorrect? I'm trying to, you know, um, uh, role play a student who doesn't know what I know and <laughs> doesn't realize that this reasoning from ChatGPT is actually slightly flawed. Um, and by the way, again, this is the demonstration of how you could use ChatGPT in an academically honest way. Um, yeah, friction force does not actually decrease. Yeah. Require the friction force increases. Yeah, so this requires larger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or might actually be the remaining choice. Um, yeah, so I don't think it's ever gonna get it. Um, so let me see. Uh, so I tried the derivation of, uh, uh, I, I tried the, the force analysis of this uh, setup, and it looks uh, like the gravitational acceleration G cancels out. So I don't think it matters whether it's on Mars, Earth, or Moon. Um, can you pick? Another choice is possibly being correct. And so G will cancel out. And by the way, if you actually did the analysis, then you'll figure out, oh, this must be correct. Wow, it's never going to get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, uh, Well, the mass cancels out in the derivation too. 
Does it? I'm not sure. Let's claim it does. Um, oh, what's uh, wrong with the uh, second choice again? Torque to which uh, larger, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so I don't know. I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not super confident uh, how well, um, like a student who doesn't know what I know can go through this interaction and <laughs> push ChatGPT to do this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the key part um, when you do the static equilibrium analysis. Then yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, so let's, uh, uh, yeah, and the choice question nine, um, that was, let's just go back up. That was uh, this one, uh, object management faster than, yeah, 11 uh, kilometers per second, that's uh, Earth's escape velocity, which, you know, question tells you. So this is what uh, escape velocity means. Um, question 10, um, yeah, I, I think that's, Easy. Yeah, so um, I guess I let me not do the demo with the other question because I spent enough time uh, dealing with the question eight. So, so, so yeah, that's ChatGPT, um, pretty good. Um, again, um, the one academically honest way you might use it is uh, as a way to study your own attempts, uh, trying to figure out what did you miss and what's the explanation of it. Um, this kind of interaction, that's totally fine. I do recommend that you study between attempts so that your second attempt will be better than your first and your third attempt will be better than your second. So let's uh, uh, do this again. This time, um, you know, I'm not going to cheat. <laughs> I'm just going to do it myself and I'm going to hope that I'll, I'm still better than ChatGPT. Uh, and uh, again, the 4.1 minutes, it's really hard time to beat. So I'm not really trying to beat it on time. I'm just uh, going to try to beat it on accuracy. Because if I go through this carefully, I can still, um, uh, I can still, you know, be, uh, get 100%, I think. And I am going to try to go as fast as I can. So that means I won't be explaining a lot. Because for me, explanation takes time. So, all right, I'm gonna start. My calculator is ready. If I need to write anything down, I have space here. So let's start. All right, Co kinetic energy, rotational, yeah. Uniform thin rod, friction can be. Oh. All right. What is the angular red speed is free and at the lowest point? Um, horizontal to down. So I can roll out, roll out certain things. Um, let me skip question two. Uh, I'll come back. Uh, this can kind of solid the ring. Uh, so they, if they are moving at the same speed, ring has a more energy from rotational kinetic energy. So the ring will roll up to higher height. And this is connected to it, what I just said. Um, Question four, what is its speed at perigee? Using conservation of momentum, and hopefully these numbers are consistent with that and the energy. Um, at apogee, 6.84, so at perigee, I'll say, okay. Um, so the expression that the constant is, the expression for angular momentum, which is MVR, kind of in the shortened version. Uh, M, I don't care, so it's a V times R. So, um, at apogee, 6.84 times R, that's going to be uh, 1,500 plus 637 for the distance from the center. That's going to stay constant, so I divide it by the distance at the perigee. Well, sorry, 400 plus. So, 7.95, yeah. Going to be way behind in time. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to lose on time, definitely. I'll just focus on getting 100%. Bicycle processing, choose statement below, okay, physics in, made uh, it'll process faster. Yeah, it, I've, it, you have a lecture video on that, so watch the lecture, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, bomb explodes, um, 
which quantities are uh, momentum is conserved and I guess angular momentum is also conserved uh, uh, mechanical energy is not because um, uh, the explosion will uh, release some chemical energy or some non-mechanical form of energy uh, oh we had this question before and from having seen it before I know the correct answer is this one <laughs> Question eight. Ah, so I've written this question, and it's meant to be done through um, uh, dimensional analysis. Four sensor unit uh, that's same as m times g, um, and so this is wrong, wrong unit, wrong, wrong unit. So this could potentially be correct. It's correct unit, and comparing between these two, uh, this says wrong unit, so not it. So it's a choice between the third and the fifth choice, and uh, the what allows you to select the right one is your intuition about what the force will be as at h in certain limits like h going to zero for example then i have an intuition that this force should be smaller and smaller and this is wrong as h goes to zero this goes to infinity so this must be right and um, so this is a way to answer this question uh, without doing detailed analysis because detailed analysis will take like five minutes uh escape velocity oh yeah arbitrarily far away yeah, these are all shuffled, so I think it's just an accident that the first choice happened to be correct both times. Accurate discretion of gravity, um, yeah, um, force is not equal, 10 times, yeah. And this should be randomized. Um, there should be a version of the question where acceleration for 10 kilograms is like 10th or something like that, I think. All right, let's go back to that one question that I skipped and actually work it out. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any way around it. So again, I'm just going to lose on time. I have already lost on time. Let me make sure that I can at least beat it on accuracy. So the setup I'm considering is this. A rod uh, suspended from one end, pulled up to horizontal position, and it's going to swing down to this position. And we are ignoring friction, so it's going to swing down. Here it'll be moving at some angular velocity omega. So I say, you know, total energy in snapshot one is uh, equal to the total energy in snapshot two. And keep going with, okay, total energy in snapshot one. Let's just say this is where my y is equal to zero. Then total energy in snapshot one is zero. Zero potential energy, zero kinetic energy. Total energy in snapshot two, uh, it's got negative potential energy. This is uh, y is equal to minus L over 2, center of mass. So uh, potential energy is mg minus L over 2. The kinetic energy, I'm going to just treat everything as being 100% rotational kinetic energy and say it's uh, uh, plus 1 half I omega final squared. So let's work out omega final, which is going to be just doing algebra in my head in the interest of time. mg L over i square rooted. So you need to use correct i for this kind of rotation about the end. It's one third ml squared. I have it memorized about rod of rod about end. So plugging that in, omega is equal to uh, m's cancel, some factor of l cancels, 3g over l. So let's see, I have 3g over l here, 3g over l here. So it's between these two. And given this omega um, uh, V of the free end, so V should be just the L times omega final. So, um, so this, I think. Yeah, so it'll be the first choice. So, um, so let's hope I <laughs> answered it correctly. And since I've already lost on time, let's just, uh, you know, uh, just make sure that I won't miss anything. Uh, I'll just go slow. Um, yeah, I just worked it out slowly, so should be correct. If I missed this, I'll be super embarrassed. Um, uh, with any, I think that's right. Um, uh, yeah, I did this calculation numerically on a calculator, so it should be right. And I did a mix of per apogee and perigee, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 
Uh, this is actually same precession speed, I think, because the mass cancels out from the derivation. Uh, I think this is right. This we've seen that it's right. Um, yeah, I explained this, and I don't really have time to rework it out like in detail. Uh, so as h goes to zero here, it should be um, so denominator goes to r, numerator goes to zero. So yeah, f uh, force needed goes to zero, which is what you would expect. And this has the same behavior, but this has incorrect unit because it's mg times the square root of a uh, unit of length, where the square root ends kind of makes a difference. Um, that's enough kinetic energy to yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's all right. All right, so let's uh, submit it and just hope that I got 100%. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I can still be ChatGPT on time, and uh, not time, on accuracy. Uh, on time, you know, it's uh, hopeless. I, I just, uh, I think uh, um, last semester was the last semester when I could have beat it both on time and accuracy. And now I, I can just, uh, I'm going to hold the line on accuracy as long as possible. And the moment uh, ChatGPT can consistently get 100% is when I can no longer hope to beat it at all and just uh, hope to tie it for as long as possible. And I guess on time, kind of. So, you know, in this attempt, I was just, uh, took a lot of time because I knew I have a chance to be it on accuracy. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss, mess that up. So, you know, ChatGPT took 4.1 minutes. I took 8.3 minutes based on this. Um, so, you know, if I were trying to tie it on accuracy, then I would have gone faster on time. So that I'm not super behind. Like, I don't take the double the amount of time. So, okay, I think that's it for the multiple choice. Thank you for those of you joining.